If only real planes were this quick and easy to make. Well, we can't actually make a real plane out of paper, but we can do the next best thing. Hi, I'm Martin Jerg, a design engineer. I work with a company that uses 3D metal printing to manufacture items like plane parts. This is the world's largest 3D metal printer. It makes large metal components without using any tools. The process is also called additive manufacturing because the method involves adding layer upon layer of metal to slowly build the item from the bottom up. This jet plane door hinge is the largest item that we have printed and the largest aerospace component printed yet. It is made of aluminium. It weighs only 11 kilograms and is 40 centimetres tall and 80 centimetres long. While this part took a week to print, making large complex items like this would have traditionally taken months. This part is more efficient because it is lighter and results in much less waste. The process starts with CAD or computer aided design. We can design one-off parts or design to print thousands of components. The printer reads CAD information to print each layer. Inside here, the printer lays down a very fine layer of metal powder across the base, about 40 micron thick, about as thick as a human hair. It then directs a high-powered laser onto the metal powder bed in a very fine spot. To our eye, it looks like it's printing in a line. Each tiny dot melts the powder metal very quickly into a liquid, which then solidifies just as fast. So, the metal powder is gradually melted together into a 3D form. We print with all types of metals, including stainless steel, nickel, titanium and aluminium. After each layer, the bed lowers slightly and the process starts again with a new layer of powder, building the part up one layer at a time. Then we brush away the remaining metal powder and inside is the new component. We can reuse the powder on the next project so it doesn't go to waste. This flexible process means we can design virtually anything. From sophisticated and intricate components for aerospace, to biomedical parts like a bone for hip replacements. We can design and control the internal structure easily too. For example, bone replacements would need to allow for some flexibility, just like real bones, and by using different ladder structures, we can control how much movement the part has. This technology is already creating new ways of making things. We just have to make sure our imaginations and designs can keep up.